All right, I am here with one of our badass women rhinos, but the important part of her 10 year journey with Camp Rhino for me is her most recent like rock bottom point and then what her breakthrough was. So tell us Kelly, like tell us about your most recent rock bottom point that you hit physically and emotionally, mentally. Um, so I, I came back to Rhino uh, a couple years ago and I've always been a boot camper. I'm a hardcore, I was a boot camper and I remember going to boot camp and I just wasn't, I, I was always the bottom of the class, I was always the slowest, I, but I've always been strong. And I remember watching Lauren at the CrossFit Games. Yes. Um, at the regionals yes. and <laughs> and I told her this I was like your most inspiring moment to me is when you were in the back of the pack and you never gave up yes and that moment inspired me so oh, get emotional <laughs> it inspired me so much and I remember last July like July of 2018 I pulled her aside outside and I said I, I wanted to tell her the story I was like I don't know how to tell you this but your most inspirational moment for me is when you were struggling at the CrossFit regionals and I, I'm that person and uh, I was like I'm never gonna be fast I'm never gonna be the runner I was because three knee surgeries later and um, I asked her if she would start training me in powerlifting and maybe teach me a little bit of CrossFit and she was like sure great and so I started training with Lauren last July and my starting members were pretty good considering I'm in my 40s and I have never been a big lifter. You're in your 40s? I know. <laughs> I'm in my, Asian, Asian. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, don't, we don't look at it, we just shrink. Uh, so uh, I started training with Lauren and found that lifting was my thing. And I mean, I was weighed, I weighed almost 200 pounds at that point and um, you know, I was just struggling, and so I found my jam in lifting heavy. And I, my, I mean, my starting numbers were like 110 bench. I bench 155 now. Whoa! Um, my starting back squat, I think, was 175. I hit 235, yes. and now my starting deadlift was 225, and I just hit 320 last week. 320? 320. Holy cow! <laughs> so, um, I mean, like, wow. I've just kind of found my place. And I think that sometimes as athletes, we want to be what we see other people doing. And I always equated being a good athlete with being fast, being a great runner, being all of these things. And I had to find what was me and what was my strength and what motivated me. And that was lifting all the heavy things. And I finally found my, I mean, I've been doing athletic things all my life and it took me until I was 40, 41 years old wow. to finally find who I am as an athlete, trying to keep up with all the 20 and 30 year olds. <laughs> I think you're <laughs> crushing everyone. There's maybe two girls in the gym who have better numbers than you and so, out of 600 people, like. It's, it's yeah. really fun to be strong. Yes. Um, I'm never going to be like that tiny, petite, skinny girl, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay being muscular and knowing that I could deadlift my family out of a burning building. That's right. <laughs> I need to. Definitely deadlift your husband, yeah. no problem. <laughs> I feel like I carry his weight all the time. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then now going to CrossFit competitions and yeah. knowing that like, the weightlifting stuff is is easy. Always finding a partner who can take care of the cardio, or as I yes. like to call it, the cardino. <laughs> um, yeah, but that's basically where I'm at. Yeah. So my weakest, lowest moments of trying to figure out who I was as an athlete versus who I thought I needed to be, and finding who I was. And tell me mentally, because I remember most of our conversations over the last ten years were about losing weight. Yeah. And because that was my personal, like, burning passion, I feel bad for some of the conversations I've had because I'm like, okay, I'm going to help you lose weight. Like, I am so, like, passionate about this. But really, like, what I want to do now is encourage women to just become their best selves, whatever that looks like, and to chase after what they enjoy, not a certain aesthetic. And so tell me about that change. Um, it's so interesting because, no joke, in the two years that I've been back, like hardcore at Rhino, and the year that I have been strength training, I haven't really lost weight. I yeah. had to go up a size 
<laughs> in pants because my pants wouldn't come out the, past my my calves the thighs, and my thighs. The thighs. So I literally like two weeks ago had to buy all a bigger size pair of pants. They all are very loose in the waist. Love I mean it. my body composition has completely changed. Um, I work with Sabrina on nutrition, so I'm not eating to lose weight more so than I'm eating for performance, yes. to feel my body. I eat an insane amount of calories and um, protein and different things a day. And I've actually lost weight, but not, not anything significant in the last year. Yeah. But if you look at the gains that I've made oh. in my, uh, my weightlifting and not having really lost pounds on the scale, but all my clothes fit better, except for my pants. <laughs> But I guess they fit better in a way. I mean, yeah. you know, my legs look really good in tight I, pants. I noticed the booty across right? the that one day. <laughs> that was like the best part of my day. <laughs> you telling me my butt looked good. It did. Um, so it, it's, yeah, it took me, I've always struggled with my weight. I was the kid in my house. My parents used to tell me I'd be pretty if I lost weight because I had a pretty face. And um, so I've, I'm like every girl who struggled with the stigma of you have to be skinny, you have to be a stick figure to, to be acceptable. And I finally feel like I have found who I am. I'm never going to. <laughs> so. You've never been that person yeah. who's okay with who you are. I've never been that skinny girl, um, but I've always been the athletic build girl and I finally have found the comfort in that. I love it. And I love being able to talk to other women at the gym who are also like me. And like, you don't have to go for skinny, just go for strong. Yes. You know, um, I'd rather lift heavier than the boys than look good in a bikini. Yes. And so. who says you don't look good in a bikini? <laughs> Two kids like, later. <laughs> I mean, that's... <laughs> so. No, but... Uh, yeah. I mean, it's the first time in my life that I feel okay wearing sleeveless shirts. There you go. I've always been super self-conscious of my arms, but now, are my arms perfect? No, but I know what my arms are capable of. Yes. So yeah. I have a confidence in myself of like, you can look at my arms and be like, oh, she's got thick arms. And I'm like, yeah, you should see a barbell in them. That's right. You know, and that's, that's right. that helps me um, with my own self-esteem. Yes. So, which has been a long time in the making. Yeah. And it, doesn't it feel so much better to just accept yourself yeah. and to just love yourself and you're eating like super healthy and I'm sure you still have fun with the eating. Oh, I just yeah. was in New York. Yeah, I so definitely had New fun. York pizza, yeah, of you course. know, but I now know it's weird because now that you, you when you eat to fuel your body, yes. you don't want to eat those no. things anymore. Like you almost feel gross about it. Yeah. Um, like I ate two thirds of my pizza and I was good. Yeah. And I had my New York pizza, but I didn't stuff myself and I still yeah. felt good the rest of my trip. So. And I want to ask you about one more thing. Sure. So, um, your kids. Yes. Your whole family is here <laughs> at Rhino. Yes, we are a Rhino family. Every day. And, you know, and no fault to your parents. There's a whole generation of parents who told their daughters to be skinny and they would get a man or whatever if they were skinny. Yeah. Like, there's a whole generation of, of those people. But I want to hear how you think it's going to be different from your daughter watching you be strong and awesome. Um, you know, Brandon and I, um, we have tried to raise our kids to be better than us because neither of us grew up in the healthiest households and had parents that taught us the right ways to live our lives. So since Maya was four years old, she's been running 5Ks and races with us. She's done Spartan. Yes. And she competes with the adults at the they terrain. Did CrossFit. Right? Yeah. They competed um, in CrossFit. This yes, year. they did the future. Yeah. Fitness competition. They're yes. both on the junior ninja team now. Yes. Um, Maya just started CrossFit today, yes. taking her so first cool. official CrossFit class. So, cool. so our kids are growing up in the gym, literally. Like this is a way of life for them, and they get mad when they don't get to come to Rhino, <laughs> and like they're bored at home, and they're just so active. And I mean, yes, we live in that technology era, and yes, my kids are into their phones and things too, but they are equally into being fit and healthy. If you ask Maya. You know, Maya, what are you supposed to eat with every meal? She'll tell you fruits and vegetables. You know, she knows that she has to do certain things to be healthy. And we don't use the words skinny or fat or Good. anything in my house. We only yes. use the words fit and strong and healthy. And, healthy. Yes. and we train them, train them, we, <laughs> train them. we raise them <laughs> to, to think with a healthy mindset yes. and not a, a, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the physical mindset like yeah, we're not trying aesthetic. to yeah we're not training yeah. them about the aesthetic we're training them to just work on being strong yeah you know my son is an amazing I, I am not the mom that is like oh you're so amazing I'm like dude you could do better <laughs> uh, but like they're really good
good athletes. And I'm like, good for you guys. Like my son is an amazing little football player. He's so fast. He cuts like crazy. And, and it, a lot of that's from here, from them being here. Gavin's been going here since he was, you know, five, six years old. And Maya has, she took those kids camps all the way back at Sunset Park. Yes, she did. So yeah. she's, she's grown up in this environment. Yeah. Like she doesn't know what to do with herself. She's not hanging from something. So. I love it. And I want to know your advice, like whoever you want to give advice to, because I feel like you could give advice to parents, you could give advice like to family units, to women who like are struggling with their self esteem but just what advice do you have? Make yourself a priority. Um, that is a huge thing. And that was something I, I actually owe Rhino a lot to my life change. Um, I was a high school theater teacher for 13 years and my life revolved around living at school and for living for other people. And as teachers, we do that anyways. But I realized I never put myself in front of anything and that's why I was so unhealthy and why I could never get ahead of my health because I was working 12 to 13 hour days, six days a week. And so when it was time to make a change, I really give Rhino a lot of credit for me moving to a middle school where I could still do my passion and teach theater and musical theater at a magnet school, but I got to leave school during normal hours. I get out of school, I come straight to the gym. And a lot of times I hear moms or wives or you know just other women that are like, I don't have time. And I used to be that person. Yeah. I don't have time, I can't do it. Well, if you make a doctor's appointment, yes. you make time to go to that doctor's appointment, yes. right? So yeah. make the gym, make a healthy lifestyle an appointment with yourself. Yes. Um, I do not make plans after school because I know I have to be at three o'clock CrossFit. That's my appointment with myself yes. for my mental health, for my family's mental health. Yes. I'm such a happier person because I actually feel good about me and I'm putting myself as a priority instead of everybody else in the world. Obviously my family is a priority. My job is a priority, but none of those are going to be good if I'm not good. If you're not. And yes. it took me so long so long to find that in myself. So that's my advice to people is make an appointment with yourself in order to make yourself healthy. If you're healthy, your life is healthy and your relationships are healthy and you can give the time and attention to other people in a healthy way and you're not always feeling like you're treading water. Instead, you're swimming that ocean. I love it. Yeah. And and you just, your, qual your time is quality too. Yeah. Because and when, when you're stressed and you're tired, then even if you're spending like an extra hour with your family instead of working out, it, the hours you're spending are not quality because you're just tired yeah. and you're just surviving. And I make, I make all of this part of my family. That's yes, why we all go so here. Cool. I know. I mean, you're not missing any family. I'm not. Time. They're always here. Yes. And everybody is so nice to my kids. Everybody accepts my kids. They everybody accepts Brandon. God bless you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll tell stories about Brandon later. <laughs> it's easier to accept my kids than my husband. He's like a giant kid. Um, we love him, but he gets in trouble. A lot. His <laughs> mouth gets him in trouble a lot. But yeah, it's um, that's part of it too, is yeah. if you make it a family affair, then you're not missing out on time with them. I think one of my favorite moments was today doing a wad with oh, my wow. daughter. And she's wow. only 12. She's 12 wow. years old and starting this. It's and amazing. it's awesome that I look at where she's going to be in just oh. a couple of years. And not that she's gonna be some like CrossFit champion, she's just gonna be healthy. It's gonna be she's part gonna be of her life. Whatever she wants. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm looking at like, get college, pay for. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you. You're so welcome. Words. No problem. Listen to her. <laughs> she's got it figured out. It took a lifetime. It took a long time. I'm 41 Learn. and Learn. I just now have found who I am. It's never too late. You're never too old. Yes. You're never too out of shape to start. Um, you can be the slowest person in class yes. <laughs> and still um, make incredible gains. I mean, a year ago, I didn't even know what CrossFit was. I still haven't even <laughs> hit a year of doing CrossFit. Yeah. But I've competed in four competitions wow. and podiumed in three of them. That's just so, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, I'm absolutely yes. the reason why you can and you need to get past it. Yes. Yeah, and get the one-on-one -on -one help. Don't oh, just gosh. go, if she would have lifted heavy without a coach, 
It, yeah. That's just how you get injured. No, um, so, I have been training with yes. Lauren for over a year yeah. now. Our year anniversary Yay. was in July, <laughs> and I absolutely wouldn't be where I'm at without having individual help and having the individual coaching. I need to be told what to do, and I want to be told what to do, so I'm doing it safely. Yes. Absolutely, because you know sometimes us older people are stubborn. So <laughs> yes, and we want to get PRs. <laughs> yes, yes, and she she holds me back <laughs> and keeps me in check. So, That's good. Yes. And three knee surgeries later, you're three knee surgeries. crushing the the PR board. Yeah, too. you. It's I amazing. mean, I can back squat with three surgeries. It's I amazing. can do a ton of things. Like you it's can't amazing. let. It's a mental mindset. No excuses. No excuses. No excuses. <laughs> Don't ever 